Um, yeah, yeah, we can see your screen, yes. Okay, so I can start now, right? Yeah, now you can start. Oh. Okay, um, sorry, you are recording, right? Yeah, it's already recording, yes. Okay, um, all right, all right. Um, good. Uh, well, it's morning here in Lagos, Nigeria. I know it's um, 5 p.m. Or, or thereabouts. In the, in the Philippines, so I'll just say good day to everyone. And that um, I'll be talking about the impact of design on emerging technology with a focus on um, AI and machine uh, learning. So, um, but before I proceed, I would like to um, introduce and tell you about uh, myself. Um, I'm a lead uh, designer at Paint Security. Uh, Paint Security um, is an AI tool for mobile theft uh, tracking and uh, prevention. And also, currently, I'm a student of Michaela Sumeris University of Vilnius in Lithuania. I'm studying communication and um, digital marketing. I am also um, a design mentor on ADP list, and I'm also um, a design um, advocate. Advocate. So, um, what are we going to discuss today? So, um, there are four segments that I have. Um, separated um, my talk and the first one is going to be design and new technology, voice UI, virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence and all the likes. Now the second one is how can design improves AI and machine learning, while the talk segment is what are the impacts of emerging technologies with relations to design. Now the last part is from design to engineering, a product approach. Now going uh, to my first um, subtopic, which is design a new technology with relations to voice UI, virtual reality. I want to believe uh, my uh, my audience and attendees uh, tech savvy. But you see, um, there is a lot of uh, problem when it comes to building um, products, building products for emerging technology. And it has been, uh, it has come to, you know, researchers notice that the fact that some of these problems are related to the fact that product teams don't um, you know, share uh, the same idea. So that way, um, a lot of uh, uh, things are not aligned in this process. For example, um, I would say that the engineering, every, every startup or every tech team has different setup. And from my understanding, with my experience, the way the engineering thinks about product is very, very different from the way the design team thinks about products and also the way the uh, marketing team also thinks about product is quite different. Now to make and build uh, a product that quite solves the user problem, there has to be a lot of alignment between three uh, of these different teams. So in that way, um, the team will be able to build not just um, a product that solves um, human solution, but a product that users genuinely loves and want to use. Now, designing uh, for new technology requires a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of research, and a bulk of that research falls on the hands of the design team. Now, like I said earlier on, 
the engineering team always have a different approach or different ways of thinking about building tech products. Why the design team also has a methodology and approach of building. But the fact is, once we understand that whichever uh, process that a team or a product team decide to follow, there must be a process that cuts across every members of the team so that every input is going to uh, fall in line with the objective. For example, building an AI uh, product or a voice product and an engineer in a team starts to write the code about you know, the functionality and all of that. I can tell you, uh, you know, with experience that the only thing that this uh, product is going to do is to uh, is to most in most cases is to uh, what I'll call work in an engineering way, but it might not be able to solve the user problem because the key element of you know research from the design team is not infused into the product process. So in my uh, view, I am of the opinion that before the engineering comes into the product view, the design team needs to be given ample time and opportunity for them to carry out a thorough research, for them to be able to iterate around the idea and be able to come up with a product process that the engineering team can not just um, accept, but also you know, build a product at the end that wants to tackle and solve human uh, problem. Now, uh, today, um, there is a lot of attention on uh, AI. I, I think the reason for that is uh, because of chat uh, GP3. And recently, the attention um, artificial intelligence has been getting, uh, you know, has divided a lot of teams or a lot of engineering teams into wanting to, you know, quickly build a product. But, you know, as someone that has been in tech for the past eight years, and, you know, for someone with uh, a lot of experience, you would agree with me that AI is not something that is new uh, in, the tech, in the tech field. AI is improving uh, industrial processes and making machines smart, but a lot of solution, you know, lacks user experience. If you look at it, I mean, in America today, in a recent research, 90% of Americans have used a smart product before, either, uh, uh, either through um, Echo or um, Google Assistant or whatever uh, form of um, AI tool that is out there. So this, you know, uh, lets you understand the fact that AI is not something that is new. But because of the buzz around chat GP3, a lot of um, a lot of attention that AI is getting lately has made engineers to want to jettison, you know, product process. Which means at the end of the day, engineers build products that can actually uh, function, but doesn't solve the human problem. So um, going to um, the next time, you know, to solve this problem, there are requirements, you know, designing for emerging technology. And as I have mentioned earlier, the base uh, process for, you know, product teams is to start with the research. You know, um, like I said, today, you know, I've, you know, come across engineers, you know, that's, probably have an idea and in the course of you know having that idea they quickly want to you know build a product engineer it and you know push it uh, to, to 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 the users and you know at the end of the day they have a product in the marketplace that people either don't understand how uh, it functions or probably you know cannot even uh, use this uh, 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 product or tools in, 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 in the end. 
So instead of you know us both um, you know uh, the engineers and design trying to um, you know circumvent the process, the solution is still you know embedded in thorough research and iteration. And like I've said, that bulk of the process starts from the design team. Now, um, what do we need, you know, designers to do in able to work collaboratively and effectively with engineers? We need designers to account for and shape experience in emerging technologies. What this uh, drives or what uh, the end goal for this is the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, we have a product or a solution that has gone through, you know, design processes, you know, uh, that at the end of the day, all of these processes would lead to, you know, uh, creating a, a product that users not only find uh, uh, usable, but also find uh, uh, interesting as well. Like I said, you know, if um, engineers are quick to, you know, because, you know, of the engineering skills and the ability to write code and all of that, want to decision the design process and say, oh, let's quickly move into uh, writing code and making things work. It mitigates, you know, the end goal for such a uh, product. So designers need to account for and shape experience in emerging technologies in such a way that at the end, they will build a product that, you know, the end uh, users, which are the people, find the product very uh, interesting and usable. So um, also going to the next slide, we need designers to account for user experience in emerging technologies beyond visual design. You know, um, AI and machine learning has gone beyond, you know, just the visual um, side of it. As mentioned earlier, we have um, Amazon Echo, we have Google Assistant, we have uh, Apple Siri and all of that. So. In every other product, you know, that are out there, because of accessibility uh, 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 reasons, there needs to be a process whereby, you know, designers in collaboration with engineers think beyond product in the visual sense alone. We have to think of a solution that also encompasses people that, you know, probably, you know, cannot see. So. Visual uh, voice. You know, encompasses accessibility for other and every other uh, for every other uh, users. Now going to the second uh, sub uh, topic. Um, please hold on. I'm trying to. I don't know. Let's screen. Uh, yes, Mustafa, we can see your screen. Uh, I'm trying to move to the next slide. I'm coming. All right, sir. Okay, so um, the second subtopic how can design improve? AI and machine learning. You know, um, in my first uh, sub topic, I have somehow um, speak on some of the processes, you know, on how to improve AI and machine learning. But in this um, sub, uh, this second sub topic, um, I would like to um, itemize some other ways you know, um, designers and engineers can actually uh, improve, uh, you know, delivery of products that, you know, uh, users want to use. Now, as I've said earlier on, voice UI is key for accessibility reasons. It enables, you know, every other uh, person that is uh, visually impaired to be able to have access to your product. For example, uh, today, that uh, GP3 uh, doesn't have a voice UI. 
So basically, anyone that is going to use um, chat GP3 is probably going to be someone that you know can you know uh, type and you know see what they type. But with the uh, infusion of voice UI in chat GP3, it encompasses people that are visually impaired to be able to use um, uh, this product. Also, you know, thinking beyond um, um, you know what we currently have. You know, uh, the web is uh, is changing. We are moving from uh, you know web two to web three, and design designers and engineers need to account for you know uh, what people are going to experience. And you know, with the advent of you know virtual reality, imagine you know uh, in metaverse, you know uh, with your Oculus, you can be able to access uh, chat GP3. That's you know also uh, improves. Uh, the user experience of people in, in 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 metaverse as well, you know, and same thing applies to uh, AR, which is augmented reality. So, factoring all of this into your uh, product process enables you to be able to build a product that you know not just only focuses on one aspect of uh, product delivery. Now, I understand the fact that. You know, uh, adding features into product takes uh, a lot, but you know, factoring all of this at the initial stages of building a product enables you to be able to put all of this in a backlog. That you know, even when you know you are able to start with one feature, as the product evolves and progresses, you had you know some of these features as, as you know the product grows uh, definitely. Um, going to uh, the next slide, you know, um, so basically going from visual design to micro interaction for imaging technology, you know, requires designers and even, you know, engineers to understand, you know, some of the products that, you know, would enable you to be able to, you know, iterate, you know, before Handed over to uh, engineers. For example, today we have uh, some of these software that I have here, Lotifiles. These are, you know, micro interaction tools that designers can use to iterate, you know, uh, before you know um, uh, engineers undo the engineering part. With Lotifiles, you can be able to show how, you know some some movement of functionality works in motion basically and we have body moving after effect and code pen uh the i o i want to believe um you know um most front end engineers uh knows uh, code pen dot i o and even as a designer i use some of this thing because before i hand over you know my uh design assets to engineers most times i want to understand if what i've designed is uh, something that can uh, the engineers can uh, can bring to life. So using CodePen and playing around CodePen gives me you know that opportunity to be able to you know also give life to my design. And you know when I work with an engineer that says oh a particular design is impossible or they can't do it, I tell them no. I have it on CodePen and you can also you know just copy the code and you know. So these are the ways and things that both designers and engineers you know, can understand and be able to collaborate seamlessly. So I always implore you know, designers to understand you know, environments and ways with which engineers work, and also for engineers to also understand the environment with which you know, design are based. This enables collaboration to be effective and seamless. So, um, you know, going to the next slide, uh, design skills for imaging technology. You see, as I mentioned earlier on, a lot of things are changing in uh, on the internet, and you know, moving gradually from Web two to Web three, a lot of things that are in Web three are more interactive. 
and some of the skills that uh, designers need to have to be able to position themselves better, you know, to build, you know, products that are appealing in Web3 at 3D design, interactive design, and high fidelity prototype. As I mentioned earlier on, you know, to be able to save, you know, engineering team the headache of, you know, just jumping into writing code. If as a designer, you are able to have, you know, a design that is in high fidelity and that can show how, you know, a product operates, it enables, you know, having, giving engineers that visual uh, uh, sense of a product enables them, you know, and simplifying things for them to be able to write a code, you know, that uh, really addresses the functionality of that product. So, uh, gone are those days where, as a designer, you just made a flat design and you ship it to the engineering team. As a designer, you need to be able to uh, upgrade your skills from uh, 2D uh, design to 3D, from 3D to interactive design, and then high fidelity uh, prototype. So these are the skills that designers uh, need to uh, be. As I mentioned earlier on, designers also need to take outside and beyond the screen. From voice UI to metaverse, all of these places that a product you know, can be accessed and used, you need to be able to take uh, in all of these spaces and how to, uh, how to you know, really create a product that is usable in all of these uh, new uh, spaces. So uh, the third uh, subsector is what are the impacts of design on emerging technologies? As I've said, my objective uh, basically as a designer advocate is to be able to mitigate the friction between um, uh, engineering team and design team. Once we understand that we all have one objective, at the end of the day, we can, you know, uh, create uh, a process around how to meet this objective in a collaborative way. Today, sectors where, you know, emerging technologies is used is healthcare, products like Microsoft Ululens. You know, uh, when I first saw it um, a couple of, of years ago, it was something amazing. I mean, Microsoft Ululens is a tool where a doctor that is virtually in another, you know, location or country can actually operate, you know, on 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 a patient virtually, and this is something that you know is quite amazing. Or even if the doctor is physically available, you can actually uh, use Ololens to, um, you know, to investigate the internal organs of a patient without using uh, a surgical knife. So uh, another industry is the gaming industry with, uh, with the likes of uh, uh, metaverse games and all of that. Um, also, you know, mental health. We have uh, mental health practitioner, practitioners today that are actually, you know, um, give uh, or attend to their patients, you know, virtually through the use of uh, emerging technologies. We have it in the uh, entertainment world. In the fashion industry as well, where you know on the website you can try on includes even uh, uh, virtually uh, and also uh, tourism. So these are the these are the uh, sectors and industries. Imagine technologies are really shaping, you know, are changing how things are usually uh, being uh, being done. And uh, sectors where you know uh, imagine technologies are coming to gradually it's also uh, the aerospace um, automotive and um, sports you know we have uh, in sports today we have uh, a process where an athlete can actually uh, run you know side by side with uh, a 3d uh, runner that's probably uh, is or our best uh, previous uh, record or time and be able to beat you know that record uh, virtually in the automotive space, we have uh, autonomous uh, driving from products like Tesla and the likes. But I still believe, you know, this uh, uh, industry is still being uh, improved upon. In the aerospace uh, 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 
um, industry as well. I mean, there is the talk about, uh, you know, aeroplanes being able to, uh, you know, take off without uh, the pilot. So all of these areas are where emerging technologies can, you know, really shape how things uh, are, are done. So um, the fourth uh, subsector is, uh, subtopic is from design to uh, engineering, a product out approach. Now, you know, um, in my experience, I've understood that there is um, engineering methodology and process, why they are design process. While, you know, these processes might be different, there is one thing you know that binds them together and that thing is the fact that you know they all have the same objective which is you know to solve uh, the user uh, problem so um in, in this slide i am going to highlight a cost effective approach for you know a design team uh, you know, to work so as to be able to uh, solve not just the user problem, but also the engineering uh, uh, um, problem as well. Um, sorry, I'm uh, coming. Hello? Yes, Mustafa, yes, we can hear you. Can. Um, sorry, can you, can you see my continue. screen? Yes. yes, it's all good. Um, sorry, um, uh, what can you see on my screen? I'm having... Yes, uh, Mustafa, we can see your screen. Uh, we can see that uh, Chrome setting is screen. OK, um, I, I moved away, so I'm trying to go back to the slide. I'm sorry. OK. Yeah, this is your slide, correct. OK, so um, the first uh, uh, the first thing is, you know, to define the problem. Now, what, you know, when we say define the problem, in my experience and understanding, I've come to realize that there's a difference between having an idea and then, you know, Therefore, a, uh, a last mile uh, delivery uh, product. Sorry, can you still see my screen? Yeah, we can uh, hear you and we can see your screen. Uh, it is okay in our side. Okay. Okay. So, um, as I was saying, so there is a difference between um, having an idea in your head and you know, the idea becoming a product um, solution. So, for example, let's say someone in the product team has a last mile delivery uh, idea. Now, at that point or at that moment, it is still an idea. Now, defining the problem further elaborate if, you know, uh, people actually uh, have that problem and if they do, do they want a solution to that problem? In my experience, I've come to realize that as a tech person, there is a different, it is not every problem technology can solve. And there is a difference between a problem and a tech solution approach. Sometimes you can engineer a solution that, you know, simply just require maybe uh, someone to just, you know, uh, make some, uh, 
make some physical uh, change or something, and before you know it, your product is no longer uh, that relevant. So defining the problem, you know, gives you a uh, deeper understanding as to if that problem is actually something that can be developed into, uh, if that idea is something that can be developed into a product that users want. Now, furthermore, conducting the research after defining the problem is the next process. Now, in conducting this research, you'll be able to tell, you know, and be able to segment even your users. For example, uh, what are, okay, the people that are having this problem, are they of the same age group? Or are they of the same uh, ethnic group? Are they, so you'll be able to, you know, segment and collate data that would further enhance, you know, your product uh, process. Now, the next phase is to brainstorm and conceptualize. I've come to realize that uh, in tech, there can be more than 10 uh, solution to one problem. So when you brainstorm and conceptualize as a designer, at the end of the day, it enables you to be able to create different ways to, to which you can address a particular problem and also streamline and finally select a solution that you think best, uh, you know, address that particular problem. Then the next stage is to create a prototype. As I mentioned earlier on, a prototype is something that is visually appealing to anybody. It is not yet in the engineering stage. It is still in, its, in the design stage with a you know, with a physical process of how a product works. When you have a, a prototype, trust me, uh, in my experience, it is the life of engineering teams. I've realized that, you know, 90% to 99% of the time, when I, as a designer, you know, solve a problem and I'm able to create a prototype for a particular design or process, engineers are able to, you know, create it faster than when things are, you know, in, let's say, in the abstract uh, uh, 2D design uh, phase. Now, after creating a prototype, the next thing is, uh, you know, to select and finalize. Definitely, I mean, a proto the prototype might be more than one or two, depending on how the product uh, process is. So if you're able to create more than one prototype for a particular solution, then the next phase is to select which one is, you know, you know, quite address the solution and then finalize. Now, at this stage, the next thing is product analysis. For you to get to this phase, definitely, you know, uh, the key element here is to conduct an evaluation of the prototype that has been selected. You know, you invite uh, potential users, you know, and tell them to come, you know, you know, uh, interact with that product and see, you know, how easily they are able to interact and use the product. So in your evaluation, if they find it uh, easier to use, that is good. It means you have done something great that can be pushed to the engineering team for final, uh, uh, you know, uh, process. But if you know there is a glitch at this place, definitely you need to sit back and see you know some of the challenges the users are having you know in using the prototype and how you know you can address the challenges the users are having. So with all of this you know cost effective approach that I've listed, you would uh, understand that you know the end goal is to add over all of this to the engineering team. So at this phase, the objective is not just, you know, to create something that the users find usable or appealing, but also to help and, you know, uh, streamline the engineering and reduce, you know, the engineering process for the engineers as well. So uh, in, 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 in my sense, I think uh, as a product person, these are the costs effective um, um, approach, you know, into building uh, a solid, um, you know, uh, product. 
So um, I don't know um, how many uh, minutes I have left, um, but I think um, this uh, is the final stage of my slide. And I would like to say thank you uh, to everyone uh, for listening. And yes, if uh, anyone uh, definitely have um, any uh, question, I will be glad you know to answer any question uh, at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Uh, actually, I cannot see much question from uh, audience. I think uh, initially we got some issue with the uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, that was the reason I think uh, you uh, your session. Uh, I think we got bit delayed, but somehow it is OK. Um, we got the bit idea of uh, your uh, uh, session as well, so we got to know like uh, the impact of design on the uh, emerging technology, especially when we are dealing with the artificial intelligence, machine learning. Now the things are, are moving much faster. So thank you for your event. And uh, now um, I would like to invite our next speaker. Mm. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you Mustafa once again. And uh, uh, we will again uh, be in touch. So now 